low-income apartments for rent in Oakland, CA. We previously released an article regarding low-income housing tips. We hope you've learned something valuable about selecting low-income housing, whether you want to live therein permanently or temporarily. This article will go into further detail on low-income apartments for rent. If you have completed any rehabilitation recovery program, such as halfway houses or sober living homes, then opt to hunt for low-budget apartments for rent to reside primarily to look for steady work to meet your necessities independently. Here are some low-income apartments for rent that you can live in inexpensively, pleasantly, and safely. What is considered low-income in Oakland, CA? Low-income housing, often known as affordable housing, is accommodation for low-income people or families. Even though housing has been acknowledged as a fundamental right under several foreign treaties, access to housing for low-income persons is often tricky. Various official, commercial, and non-profit sector programs have assisted low-income persons in obtaining housing. Numerous small-scale acts have sought to address the issue individually or locally specifically, if renters who cannot pay their rent may be eligible for a range of government-sponsored affordable housing programs. Those admitted into the program are responsible for finding their lodging. Apartments, townhouses, and single-family homes are all examples of this. Housing and Urban Development, HUD, disperses federal funds to local public housing authorities, sometimes known as FAS, which provides the housing voucher program. HUD calculates the area median income, AMI, for each nation area each year. In major cities, the AMI is often higher. What is considered inexpensive in San Francisco, for example, is quite different from what is deemed to be affordable in Wichita. San Francisco's AMI is $119,000. In contrast, Wichita's AMI is $51,000. The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in San Francisco is $2,780, around 30% of the area's AMI. The typical one-bedroom apartment in Wichita costs $650, which is a little less than 30% of the area's AMI. 30% AMI Those earning less than 30% of the AMI are considered very poor. HUD typically prefers those deemed very low income regarding Section 8 vouchers. 50% AMI Households earning 50% of the AMI are regarded to have a very low income. Those in this category will most likely be given preference over those classified as low income. 80% AMI Low income is defined as earning less than 80% of the AMI. This group is given the lowest priority for Section 8 vouchers and will likely spend longer time on the waiting list as a result. As long as the housing fits the program's conditions, the applicant may choose it and is not confined to typical subsidized housing. The FA pays the landlord a subsidy on the applicant's behalf, and the candidate pays the difference between the actual rent charged by the landlord and the amount subsidized by the program. Differences between low-income housing and public housing In addition to the Housing Choice Voucher Program, Section 42 and Public Housing Choices are also included. Section 42 the Low Income Housing Credit Program, often known as Section 42, was created to promote the designation of low income rental housing for persons earning less than a certain amount of money. Developers and investors obtain tax breaks and incentives in return for providing low income housing. The housing may be new or restored older structures, and it can be mixed use, offering some units as low income and others at market rate. Developers and investors may continue to claim the tax credit as long as a specified proportion of units are accessible for low-income tenants. Public Housing The federal government funds the Public Housing Authority, FA, to create and manage these rentals. Although many housing authorities continue to create new homes, traditional public housing is being phased away, favoring Section 8 vouchers. In return for supplying stock, these investors and developers get tax breaks. Most public housing constructed before 1980 is still owned and administered by local FAS. Understanding Section 42 What exactly is Section 42 housing? Section 42 is classified as subsidized apartments, implying that excellent housing may be cheap to individuals who earn a specific amount of money. 
Federal rental assistance programs assist around 5 million low-income families in cheaply renting modest dwellings. Section 42 is sometimes a low-income housing tax credit or a housing tax credit scheme. Section 42 housing is subsidized housing part of a federal tax scheme that encourages builders and developers to produce affordable housing. The government then provides developers with a federal tax credit. To earn the distinction, developers must keep their properties safe and respectable and adhere to income and rent limitations while collecting the credit. What are the advantages of living in a Section 42 property? It is difficult to make the appropriate judgment when no money is on hand. When you are in a dire position due to a job loss, spending on health care is critical to saving money on rent. For this reason, housing may be a wise option to help you get back on track. As a result, there are certain advantages to living in Section 42 housing. Nearest locations For 42 dwelling units, the closest places are in downtown areas. This location is critical if you plan to commute to the workplace from your home. You do not need to include the cost of public transportation in this calculation. Repair work regularly. Section 42 Housing flats are appropriately fitted and furnished on site. Repairs are carried out regularly to ensure that the renters have a better, safer, and more pleasant living environment. The authority in charge of tax credit flats constantly reviews appliances, tiles, metal works, and other civil works necessary for the building. Furthermore, the flats are outfitted with fire resistance systems to keep you safe in the event of a fire. Checking fire extinguishers, sprinklers, fire alarms, and other safety systems is an integral part of this. Utility costs are another source of concern. When negotiating a contract, be sure that utility costs are included in Section 42 rents. It is typical to see tax credit apartments or Section 42 housing provide competitive rents with no utility costs. You may also make use of free parking, Wi-Fi, and power. So, before going to any flats under Section 42 housing, you should think about these difficulties. What makes Section 42 housing so unique? Section 42 properties are often found in downtown locations. This makes it simple for folks to walk or use public transit to and from work. Section 42 buildings must meet strict maintenance criteria to preserve their tax credits. This may include frequent inspections to ensure that appliances are in working condition, that tiles in the bathroom and kitchen are maintained, and that all alarms, such as fire extinguishers, fire alarms, and carbon monoxide detectors, are operational. Utilities are often included in Section 42 rentals. This implies that services like garbage, recycling, and water are covered. Parking may even be included. Wi-Fi and energy bills will not be reimbursed. Where can you find Section 42 housing? As with many housing programs, chance and timing may play a significant role in obtaining one. Visit the HUD website to locate Section 42 housing. Choose your state, then your city or zip code to get a list of Section 42 properties. You will discover what type of needs are required to get your application up and to run. Is Section 42 available to you? You will be required to supply financial and household details to determine your eligibility. Section 42 eligibility is based on variables such as the number of persons in your family and your gross income, the amount you make before taxes. They would like to know about any assets you may have access to. Expect to be questioned and provided with papers about any of the following. Inheritance. Money from a trust fund. Alimony. Scholarships. Your employer's income verification, S. Be prepared to fill out a lot of paperwork the first time you renew your lease and every year after that. Keep in mind that various homes under the program may have varying expectations based on unique conditions and agreements between the landlord and the U.S. What's the difference between Section 8 and Section 42 housing? While both programs have basic qualifying restrictions that must be completed, the programs are vastly different. Section 42 homes have rentals limited at a certain level and include utilities that are the resident's responsibility. In Section 8 housing, 
the rent is based on 30% of the tenant's income, with the remainder paid by the federal government. To be eligible for Section 8, you must apply to your local public housing authority, FA. Section 8 criteria vary from Section 42 standards in that Section 8 is confined to U.S. residents and qualified immigrants. Depending on whether the property accepts other federal funds with immigrant status limitations, low-income housing tax credit, LIDG, properties may not have the same criteria. When you contact the property management to apply, you may inquire about their standards and limits. You may be put on a waiting list for Section 8 vouchers in certain states. This is often due to a greater demand for Section 8 than available. If this is the case in your location, attempt to get on as many waiting lists as possible. Applicants may be on a waiting list for more than a year in certain situations. When you locate a home that takes Section 8 vouchers, the FA will check it to ensure that it fits the standards. Because a Section 8 housing voucher is supplied by the government and is meant to travel with the tenant, you may choose to move anywhere as long as you tell your FA in advance and legally terminate your lease. The residence you pick must, once again, fulfill the FA's minimal health and safety criteria. Section 42 is a tax benefit for the property owner. Thus, it has no bearing on you. If you want to leave, you may do so after your lease expires. If you wish to apply for a unit at another Section 42 property, you repeat the procedure with the new property manager. Many alternatives are available when searching for cheap rentals, including Section 42, Section 8, and public housing. What is also subsidized apartments? There may be some misunderstanding about what subsidized implies and what Section 42 apartments are. If you reside in a subsidized flat, the government or a housing program will pay a portion of your rent. Subsidized housing, often known as affordable housing, is government support that helps persons with low to moderate incomes pay for their rent and other housing-related expenditures. Subsidized apartment programs were established to assist persons with low incomes to obtain suitable accommodation. Federal agencies and private foundations are often in charge of these initiatives. To qualify, Residents in subsidized flats must fulfill specific conditions, including income limits. The government does not subsidize Section 42. Low-income flats that are reduced or subsidized are also known as income-restricted and have income limitations. So, what precisely do income-restricted apartments imply? This implies that to qualify for Section 42, prospective residents must have an income level that is less than a specific number. Income-restricted apartments are an excellent alternative for people searching for inexpensive housing that fulfills income and household requirements. Qualifications vary depending on where you reside since income limits vary by city. Each state's Department of Housing and Urban Development decides the maximum income permitted for each county, city, and large metropolitan region. The income restriction is based on the county's average median income, AMI. Section 42 states that developers cannot charge rent that exceeds 30% of a tenant's income. Finding an inexpensive apartment might be difficult at times, but don't be afraid to check into tax credit opportunities to discover what you're looking for. Visit hud.gov to learn more about the regulations that apply to your circumstance and family. Some online calculators may help you determine if you are eligible for Section 42 or other low-income programs. If you believe you'll qualify, browse around your neighborhood for a Section 42 property that would suit your requirements. Low-income apartments near you. Finding the ideal rental property within your price range is simpler than ever. Here's where to look for the best deals on low-cost apartments in your city. According to the Pew Research Center, renters occupied more than 36.6% of American homes in 2016. In addition, Approximately 65% of the millennials polled were renting apartments. With the help of technology, finding a rental house today is more accessible, all you have to do is search the internet. You never know. You could snag your perfect rental property or apartment. That being said, using the four choices listed below, you may eliminate the stress of your rental house or apartment search. These options will assist you in locating your next ideal property. 1. Craigslist 
Despite its negative image, Craigslist may be a fantastic place to locate low-cost possibilities. Nearly 90% of renters often start their rental apartment search on this platform or Zillow. In Craigslist, you'll discover various major apartment complexes as well as individual owners who are subletting their houses or landlords who are renting out their properties. Craigslist is typically the most significant flow of real-time information in the U.S. rental housing industry since landlords and homeowners may post their properties for free. 2. Apartments.com Apartments.com is a leading website with a comprehensive list of apartment rentals, although most listings are enormous apartment complexes. It also has listings for single-family homes and townhomes. The fascinating part about this site is that it has an extensive collection of filters that allow you to select by specific categories such as military, housing, income restricted, and so on. It also has an overlay system that enables you to search while seeing transit lines, neighborhood borders, local campus, and transportation lines. Although the information on individual areas is limited, the map may see the highlighted unoccupied complexes. You may mark your desired boundary and local features on the map. If you locate your ideal rental apartment, you may benefit from special offers and other benefits by renting it via the website. 3. Hot Pads Zillow purchased Hot Pads in 2012. Today, it provides its consumers with a comprehensive list of apartment and home listings from around the United States. It has several exciting features and a lot of information. You may use the website to look for cooperative homes, rooms for rent, sublets, military, student, or senior housing. It enables you to look for ads with numerous photos. It also allows you to search for facilities and neighborhoods using keywords. Over 90,000 evaluations and reviews of apartment complexes, neighborhoods, and individual apartments are available on the website. For Trulia, Zillow, like hot pads, also owns Trulia. This website collaborates with community-based websites such as sportcrime.com and everyblock.com to collect the most up-to-date neighborhood-specific information about commuting, crime, schools, local businesses, and so on. You may also see the map, list, or grid format results. The Trulia app is available for Android and iOS smartphones and is well known for its user-friendly UI. Finding a lovely apartment does not have to be expensive. If you look through the websites listed above, you should find several apartments within your price range. Indeed, several of America's most attractive cities offer luxury apartments for $650 or less. There are also various cities in the United States where you may get a rental unit for $500 or less per month. Moreover, seeking advice from a relator is always a good idea. Real estate agents are market and local specialists. Most are always willing to express their ideas, even when you're not ready to purchase a house. One person may counsel you against renting a home, while another may encourage you to do so. In either case, their input can help you make a final decision. Agents are also aware of a vacant house nearby and moving out. If you are unable to locate an agent, consider hiring relocation specialists. Many are licensed to exhibit rental homes and can assist you in finding what you're searching for in town. Also, they may help you move if you're on a tight schedule. They will organize movers, assist you in locating child care or school, help you transport your pets, arrange for the transportation of your automobile, arrange for utilities, refer you to legal, dental, medical, and other professionals as needed. Even though the internet might help you locate available offers, please make an effort to visit the location and see it for yourself. First, go to the neighborhood where you wish to reside. Visit small businesses and neighborhood grocery stores, and look for announcements on bulletin boards. In person, visit apartment leasing agencies. You never know, you could have a price waived or a free month's rent. Examine the most recent internet evaluations of residents or speak with renters you may encounter around the property. If you don't find what you're searching for, consider visiting other areas with a high number of listings. Sit in various places and watch people.